Greetings, this is Daniel Kramer for Trailers from Hell, and uh, the movie I'm going to be talking to you about today is Sheila Levine is Dead and Living in New York. And no, that is not a zombie film. Far from it. In fact, uh, it was one of the uh, most fascinating overlooked films directed by Sidney J. Fury, this guy. I wrote a book on him. It's so far the first and only book written on him. And um, so the movie is, I guess you might say, part melodrama, part rom-com, uh, and uh, it was very loosely adapted uh, from a best-selling book by Gail Parent, and it was told unexpectedly and perhaps incongruously in the visual language of film noir, with shadowy mood lighting and long takes aplenty. Uh, so does it work? The critics and audiences of its day certainly didn't think so. Uh, but it's kind of picked up a little cult over the years, and it seems the people I encounter among those who've seen the film tend to think that uh, um, that they they like the film, uh, and they far outnumber the, those who don't. So that'll show you what uh, five decades can do to uh, a movie's reputation. Uh, so, by the way, the making of this picture was nuts. Uh, Jeannie Berlin, who had been Oscar-nominated for her role in The Heartbreak Kid, which was directed by her mom, Elaine May, uh, she, uh, she walked off the set of Sheila Levine with about two and a half weeks left more to shoot, uh, never to return. So Sydney had to scramble and shoot, uh, cleverly shoot other things without her in this kind of uh, save the movie gambit. And uh, I got to hand it to him. It does work pretty well. He does bridge a lot of, uh, a lot of gaps quite effectively. Uh, and uh, the, the movie also features Roy Scheider, this is the same year that Roy would uh, be featured in Jaws, and uh, this is a really big watershed year for Roy Scheider, and this is two sides of the Roy Scheider coin. You, you actually see him in a very uh, very beautifully played, sensitive role in this movie. He gets some work near the end of the movie with this, with this long monologue that's quite lovely. Uh, so this is part of a uh, two-film kind of um, knockout that... Uh, um, really put a, a damper on Sydney's career around this time. It was She Levine is Dead Living in New York and Gable and Lombard, both movies back to back, really um, kind of poisoned the well a bit. But uh, um, of the of those two, I, I, I love She Levine is Dead Living in New York, and I think it's ripe for rediscovery, and I'm going to be talking about why as we look at this uh, rare trailer for Sheila Levine is dead, dead and Living in New York, directed by Sidney J. Fury. Ma, you always told me that I was beautiful. This trailer is a I little schizophrenic and maybe awkwardly edited at times. It begins with a monologue by Jeannie Berlin, which is tender and serious in tone. Then it starts to lean hard into the broader comedy elements. When I interviewed writer Gail Parent, who was credited with adapting her own novel, she recounted standing outside a theater after an early test screening and asking someone, how did you like the movie? The person responded, didn't Gail Parent read her own book? Parent's story is familiar. The rights to her novel were purchased by a major studio. She was approached to adapt it, in this case with her longtime writing partner Kenny Solms, only to have its lead actress and director make over the entire structure to the point the material was nearly unrecognizable to her. This is one case where a movie and its source novel could scarcely be more different. Parent definitely has feelings about the film version of her book, and its downright nasty critical reception couldn't have helped matters. Fury, for his part, was proud of the film back then, despite everything, and still quite likes it today. I'm firmly in his camp. We're not alone, either. Jeannie Berlin didn't appear in another movie until 15 years after this, so that'll tell you that the fallout surrounding Sheila Levine impacted her career quite profoundly. But if you look at her recent credits, she continues getting a lot of work, which is wonderful because I think she's quite good here. Though I should state that Roy Scheider didn't get along with her here either, and is on the record saying so. And the reviews weren't all bad. Gene Siskel, for one, was a fan, and his review is a love letter to Jeannie Berlin's performance. Siskel even compared the film favorably to Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, and believe it or not, he liked this one more than Scorsese's classic. Interesting, huh? There were a small handful of other contemporary supporters, too, but it mattered not because the biggest critics, including Pauline Kael and Vincent Canby, virtually massacred it. I'm talking real carnage. 
By the way, this trailer features a sequence that was deleted from the final movie, specifically the one with a character named Norman. What makes this an exceptionally interesting watch is, once again, Fury's visual style. It's not quite the Ipcris file style, but it's not too far afield from it either. While Paramount head Robert Evans was watching dailies, he was known to quip, doesn't Sid know he's directing a comedy? Sidney did, but as always, he was trying to do something a little different. I could continue on and on about this picture because there's a lot to say. I took a lot of page space in breaking a lot of it down in my book. The behind the scenes stories are some of the most intense I've ever documented. But I had such a blast analyzing the film in relation to Fury's other pictures. It's an important movie in that regard. It was never released on tape or disc, but you can get it on many streaming platforms. See it and decide for yourself. Yeah.